On December 1st, 1948, a man was found on the Somerton Beach of Australia. Now, if you don't know where the Somerton Beach is located, it is located south of Australia. So, you know, all the way down there. And he did not have any form of ID. He did not have a wallet or anything like that, which is really weird. There was a train ticket found in his pants, but the train ticket was not used. According to certain reports, the man was actually on his way to a board train. And of course that never happened. So later on the autopsy report revealed that the man's stomach, kidneys, and liver were deeply congested. Also, the man's spleen was three times the normal size. Although these findings led to be inconclusive, many of the doctors believed that the cause of death could have been from some form of hypnotic poisoning. And to get even more weird, a few months later, a scrap piece of paper was found in his pocket saying, Tatang should. And I'm pretty sure I pronounced that wrong, but oh well. And this phrase is actually a Persian phrase, meaning it is ended, which is very weird, you know? Like, it is ended, the guy is dead, you know? I'm not gonna spell that out for you. Now, this scrap piece of paper was torn from the last page of the 12th century book, Rabayat, written by author Omar Khayyam. And I have a strong feeling that I mispronounced that, but you guys get me, like, come on. Anyways, a couple months later, a copy of the book was found in a car parked close to the same beach the unknown man was found. Now tell me that's not weird. Like, tell me there's no connection with that. And honestly, when I was reading this, I thought the man immediately was hiding something, you know? So I, I was kind of biased a little bit, but, you know, I kept on reading the story, so... The owner of the car was a man who claimed he had visited the Somerton Beach after the body had been discovered back in December with his brother. He noticed the book in the back seat of his car but didn't think much of it until he saw media reports and news outlets claiming its importance to the unsolved case. So immediately when he found that out, he brought it in because he was like, hey, you know, I'm trying to help you guys out. But it's almost like the police nowadays. Like, let's be honest, you know, you bring something up to the police and they might take you into custody and they might, you know, try to find all these claims against you and stuff like that. So I don't know. I'm making somewhat of a connection here on the book. The detectives noticed a phone number. Now, this phone number, it was very, you know, unusual because if you see a phone number on something like a book, you know, and it's linked to a case, you know, you're going to be intrigued like hey you know i need to call this number so i mean what do you think they did they called the number and they were immediately brought to a lady who is referred to as justin because she is for like privacy reasons which i found kind of strange like just give out your full name like what are you really hiding like come on and she had given the book actually to a man she knew back in World War II named Alfred Buxell. Things didn't add up, to be honest, um, because Buxell was actually found to be alive. Like he was alive at the time, you know? So it was like, so who really had it, you know? And investigators showed Justin a picture of the unknown man just as you know jog her memory to see if she may know and she was completely clueless she was like i have no idea sir you know i have no idea who this person is so the officers were like eh, whatever you know and she had no idea so i mean yeah there's nothing else you can really do with that and after justin's death her daughter told authorities that her mom may have been involved in illegal activities and that she oftentimes concealed things during questioning by the police now man if you have a daughter that's gonna snitch on you like that like man that's this i mean i get it you know you're trying to help people out or whatnot but wow that sucks so she was hiding stuff from the police she was hiding something so she's definitely a suspect in my book 
you know, because if you're going to have to hide stuff from police and honestly, I have no idea what she hid, but it could have been this, you know, you never know. So she's definitely a suspect in my book. And let's just fast forward to now. So, in fact, in 2009, they decided to reopen the case because they had closed the case, you know, long ago because, you know, they just couldn't find out who it was. But they reopened the case and they had noticed that the man's ear hollow on the right side was bigger than his ear hollow on the left side. And so they were like, wow, you know, I'm jotting this down because this is really interesting. So they jotted it down, you know, they kept it. And they, out of curiosity, you know, they compared that because to um, Justin's son, only because, you know, they wanted to see if it was a match. And the reason why I say a match is because this condition with your ears it's very like rare like it's like a two percent chance like it's really rare and it's only inherited like it can be inherited through somebody so they checked justin's oldest son now she had a she had a daughter but she also had an older son that actually was born around world war ii so i mean see that connection there a little bit but anyway so they checked and it turns out that he had the same condition with his ears. And that's crazy. Like, that's definitely a coincidence there. And it's too good to be true. And for sure, you know, you never know. The unknown man could have could have had a child with Justin. So it's up to you to decide who do you think is really behind all of this. Thank you for watching this video. And if you like this video, make sure you click this video right here because it is going to link you, of course, to one of my other videos, which I'm sure you guys will like. So click on that video. It's very interesting. Don't worry, it's not boring. And also click on this video too, um, just because, you know, I always make videos every week. So just click on that video and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.